Let praise be a weapon Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy Let's do it this morning Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety Let it rise Let praise arise We sing Jesus, yes we sing your name in the dark and it changes everything We sing with all we are and we claim your victory yeah. So let it rise, let praise arise Let's declare it today We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giant Oh, fear cannot survive when we praise you The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lift Him high With all creation cry, God, we praise you Oh, 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 oh we praise you Oh, 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 oh Let faith, let faith be the song that overcomes the raging sea yeah. let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me let it rise let faith we trust you Lord we believe yes we believe yes let faith be the song that overcomes the raging sea let faith be the song that calms the storm Inside of me, so let it rise. Let faith arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Well, fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high With all creation cry God We praise you oh, oh, oh. Sing with us this morning We pray We praise you oh, 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 oh. We praise you Let heaven come to earth. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise. Yeah. Yeah. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. Yeah. Like this is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, hey yeah. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. We well, fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high with all creation. God, we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. And oh, 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 we praise you. And oh, 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 we praise you. Yes, God. Lord, we thank you even in our, to the second and third and fourth generation, we ask you that your blessings will be passed on. We thank you for a great time in your presence. And everybody said in Jesus' name.
Come on, come on, someone shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing is too difficult for you, Lord. In the middle of the storm, Lord, just one word and cal your, the storm is calmed in Jesus' name. Be still. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. Turn to someone and say, receive his peace today.
the day that you have made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise stills the avenger. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Our praise stops the devil's plans. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Can I hear a bigger, bigger amen? amen. <laughs> we believe it, Lord. We believe it. Thank you, Lord. to praise you, Lord. All honor to your name. Honor to your name. The name that's so much greater than all names. Oh, yeah.
lifted up, be lifted up. Be lifted up. Be lifted up. Jesus, we lift you up. Let your train fill the temple. Fill this place with the wind of your glory. With the wind of your glory. Healing waters flow. It's all about you. It's all about you. inviting us to remember, remember all the things he has brought us through, all the victories he has won with us. The Lord is calling us to remember in this time, in this season, how he saved us over and over again, how he provided for us, how he set us free and brought our children back, our prodigal children back to him. So we just want to remember what you did, Lord, and we give you the glory and all the honor and all the praise and we do lift you up because you're going to do it again you're going to do it again and we thank you ahead of time Well, if you be a reproach for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. So in those times when hatred or rejection seems to come your way, just begin to rejoice and be happy because my glory is resting upon you. You become a magnet for my glory when you endure persecution and stand for me in an uncompromising way. So rejoice today that you are partakers of my suffering, says the Lord, because in the end, my glory is going to encompass you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So good to see Scott Penny. Scott was in the hospital. So glad he's out now and around. And same for my brother Rick Rogie was in the hospital as well. He's out now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So good. Yes, my father. Glory to God. Thank you, my father. So good. Good to see all of you today. Praise the Lord. Thank you, my father. Brother Bill, when's Jesus coming back? Well, very soon, I'm sure. We're, it's going to be in one of our lessons since 1948 when Israel became a nation, that the nation was born. And Psalms 90, verse 10, tells us the age of a man is 60 to 80 years. We got 1948. We're writing those years. We don't, do we have a specific date he's coming back? No, no, not yet. It's very close. And the scripture for that is? Well, no man knows. No. <laughs> Amen. He's right on. No man knows the hour, the day or the hour, but he is coming back. And so the whole reason for us getting together today is to get our hearts prepared to go to be with him, right? Thank you, Jesus. So like right now, Father, we just ask you to ad adjust us, tweak us, Lord. We've come here today, Father, to enter into greater intimacy with you. Greater glory is coming. Thank you, Father God. There is coming a tsunami of God's glory, his power, Holy Ghost power upon this earth. 
and we can be ready for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him for it. Hey, you got another song. thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we lift Brenda's sister up before you right now, battling pneumonia. We command that pneumonia to cease in Jesus' name. And, Lord, that your healing anointing would course through her being. Lord, to give her resurrection power, Lord. Lord, to raise her up and free her from pneumonia. That she would live long, live strong, and live healthy, Father. We praise you right now, Father, for your goodness, your healing power in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Somebody else being bothered with their wrist. There's uh, some pain or discomfort or immobility there. Just lift your hand to heaven and say, yes, Father, I've received my healing. Someone else this morning in their ribs. Uh, God's touching you. Maybe that's somebody out there watching on the line. But uh, God's touching you right now. It's your ribs. Doug, praise God. Thank you, Father, for doing it. Father, we thank you right now for touching Doug in Jesus' name. Oh, bring resurrection power to him. It's to us who who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand, far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that's named. Thank you, Father, for touching him right now. Thank you for showing him how much you love him, Father, today. Touch those ribs in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All creation cries. Holy. Holy is the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, for having touched Elaine, Father, in that condition. Her eye in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. For your restoration, total vision, healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Christians in the Congo. Today, in 2023, there are 95% of the country of Congo that are Christians. 95%. God is moving, isn't he? Come on, praise him for it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, you can go ahead and be seated. Good seeing all of you this morning. God is faithful. Everybody say, the Lord is faithful. Oh, he's faithful to his people, his children. He loves you so very, very much. We're going to go ahead and give this morning a thank you once again for sowing to Israel. I think it was $5,500 we told you came in for Israel. And uh, we were able to send that to him. We want to say thank God for all the veterans this morning. If you've yes. served in the military, please stand up if you would. We just want to say thank you so much. Please do that. We owe a debt of gratitude to all of you guys, ladies who, who served in the military. We appreciate you so much making that sacrifice, taking that time to devote to your country. And we so much appreciate it. Thank you, Lord, on this Veterans Day. Thank you, Lord. Well, the Bible says stir up your pure mind by way of remembrance. And so we want to stir up your pure mind this morning, as it says in Malachi chapter 3, just to bring remembrance to you, Malachi chapter 3. And it says in verse 10, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat or provision in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. God wants her to be provision in his house. And, you know, we just sowed that check to Israel. That means there was provision in the house for us to be able to do that, right? And so that's his purpose in saying this to us. He says, see if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. I'll get the devil off your back so that he, can't, he stops robbing you in various areas, all right? And that's done by tithing. Yes. All right, thank you very much for that. Oh, okay. One thing we forgot to mention to you this, this morning was please be sure to vote on Tuesday. Very, very important, all right? Be sure to vote. Vote pro-life. Amen. And I think we've got, maybe in your announcement sheets today, I think there's a, uh, 
a notice about to whom you should vote or for whom you should vote. And so we encourage you to do that. And we'll promote the pro-life cause. In fact, ushers, we could pass these out too. This is another set of uh, information that uh, I don't want to call propaganda <laughs> from the American Family Association. But this is part of our Take Back America campaign to keep you informed of what's happening. Thank you. Around the country and as far as our legislators are concerned, so be sure to take one of those. If you run out, let me know. I got more up here so that everybody could have one of those. Thank you so much. All right, are you ready to give this morning? It says bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. That takes faith to do that, doesn't it? And so when we sow and we invest in God's kingdom, that's much better than any company, Amazon or Google or anybody that you could invest in. We know there's a sure return on that. He says he will open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you'll not be able to contain. So are we all set here? Everybody get the, their announce or their uh, envelopes for giving this morning? Praise God. Well, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we ready to pray? All right. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. As we bring our tithes and offerings to you, Lord, we thank you for taking them and using them, Lord, to your glory, to glorify the kingdom of God, to advance your work in the earth. And, Lord, we pray right now that it will cause people to come to the Lord, just like in the Congo, Father. Many have come to, to know you. We thank you for that, Father, and we pray that it will be seed that will bring forth fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. Shout to Jesus today. He's awesome, isn't he? Come on, praise him with all your hearts. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you that you're faithful, Lord. 
Thank you, my Father. Glory to God. Give your neighbor a fist bump there and tell him Jesus loves you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have your Bibles this morning. Turn with me, if you would, to Psalm 107. Psalm 107. This is kind of cute. Uh, after summer vacation, a teacher asked her young pupils how they spent their holiday away from school. One child wrote the following. Well, we used to always spend summers with Grandma and Grandpa. They used to live in a big brick house, but Grandpa got retarded. I think he meant retired. <laughs> and moved to Florida. Got retarded and moved to Florida. Anyhow, they go to a building called a rec center, but they must have got it fixed because it's all okay now and do exercises there. <laughs> there is a swimming pool where they all jump in, jump up and down with hats on. <laughs> At their gate, there is a dollhouse with a little old man sitting in it. He watches all day so nobody can escape. Sometimes they sneak out. They go cruising in their golf carts. Nobody there cooks. They just eat out, and they eat the same thing every night, early birds. Some of the people can't get out past the man in the dollhouse. The ones who do get out bring food back to the rec wrecked center and call it pot luck. <laughs> My grandpa says that grandpa... I'm sorry, my grandma says that grandpa worked all his life to earn his retardment and says I should work hard so I can get, I can be retarded someday too. <laughs> when I own my, when I earn my retardment, I want to be the man in the dollhouse. Then I will get people out so they can visit their grandchildren. <laughs> That's a little child's perspective, huh? Well, how many know the Bible tells us in Psalm 107, verse 2, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the re say that with me. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. How many redeemed in here? You're bought with a price. You're purchased with, with a price. You're not your own. Amen? You belong to God. Your spirit belongs to Him. Your body belongs to Him. So it says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who ha he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Now, you know what that means? That means he's redeemed you from the control of the enemy. The enemy no longer controls you or manipulates you, praise God, like a puppet on a string. No, you were once under his control because it says in John 8, 44, that you were of your father, the devil. But now you have been refathered. You have a new father. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. And whom the Son has set free is what? Free indeed. Amen. Everybody say, I'm free indeed. I'm, free indeed. I'm, the I'm the redeemed of the Lord. Redeemed from the hand of the enemy. The of the enemy. Glory to God. So we ought to say that every day. Amen. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. The of the Lord. Hallelujah. I used to sing that song. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I'm re Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you for helping me remember those words. All right. <laughs> so today, in fact, uh, let's take a look at this video clip first of all. Let's start off with that. And these are the players in the World Series that are Christians. And remember, these guys are millionaires. Let's listen to what they have to say. Uh, they're having a little trouble there. But we'll get it in a minute. Hallelujah. World we'll champion. I had a chance to talk to players from both teams about the highs and lows of the game and how they keep it all in perspective. His two on pitch. His right field. Big Sid Young. When you lean into Jesus and you're, and you're able to really dive into the Word, it just helps. You realize that there's a lot more than just baseball. With me, with having my relationship with Jesus, there, there is nothing missing. Whether I'm really good or really bad, like I know He loves me and I'm trying to do the best I can uh, in His image. Baseball for me is a, uh, it's a platform to be able to spread what I believe in. 
It's definitely been awesome for me to be able to use this as uh, something to spread my faith. Easy to get anxious and caught up in being in the World Series, but I, I just try and focus it on a, as an opportunity to uh, use use the talents he's given me and try and try and be at, uh, as free on the mound as I can, and hopefully someone sees Jesus when they see me throwing. When you realize, in the grand scheme of things, like it. It's just a baseball game. Um, there's a lot to learn from winning and losing, and and really, like, if it goes wrong and you lose the World Series, then you know your your future's still sealed where it, where it's supposed to be. So, having that to lean back on kind of like gives you an edge of confidence and realize that like whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Having an eternal perspective on this job helps, um, and I would say not just preparing for baseball, but preparing in life trying to be on mission here at this job is what I would say my wife and I try and do day in and day out like how can I come to the field and make a difference how can I share God's love how can I um, put my head down and work hard because God's given me the ability to work hard like nothing I've done have I earned you know God's given me the ability to do everything just two months ago in August Diamondbacks reliever Ryan Thompson was released by the Tampa Bay Rays causing him some anxiety and doubt that is, until his prayer life became a priority. Now he's playing in the World Series and pitching better than ever. Prayer has been something that is, uh, I believe, kind of taken my career to the next level. Um, you know, uh, I think a lot of people are curious about um, what I changed. You know, why, why do you have a 6 ERA with, with Tampa and why do you have a .6 here? Um, I think I was just more reliant on the Lord. I'm asking him to take away all the things that the, that the enemy puts on me, and I'm asking him to give all the things that's from him. And uh, it's, been, it's been really special. In 2020, Ryan pitched for the Rays in the World Series. It was then he came to a life-changing conclusion that he thinks about while competing in this World Series. It's something that hit me kind of hard. Ever since I was six years old, I've been living my life as if baseball is my identity and I get to the World Series, the grandest stage, and I realize, like, this is it. This world is the cup that always needs to be refilled. It can give you happiness, for sure, but it does not provide fulfillment, and fulfillment only comes from Jesus Christ. Well, isn't that cool? Right. Glory to God. That's pretty good. Go ahead. Thank God for that. These guys are millionaires, yet they have a sincere, heartfelt relationship with Jesus. The Bible says that we're to love the Lord with... God, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. And these guys, you can see, have a sincere, intimate relationship with Jesus. They have a dependence upon the Lord, too, don't they? You can tell that. Even th not their money, but their, their Lord is who they depend upon. And win or lose, they're acknowledging God as head over their lives and director of all that goes on. And so, and they trust in the Lord no matter whether they win or lose. I think that's pretty commendable, and I like the part about using baseball as a platform to what? To witness and to share Jesus with people. You know, whatever you do, whether you're a doctor, lawyer, truck driver, mill worker, whatever, you can use your occupation as a platform to share Jesus. And so, turn with me, if you would to John chapter 15 today. John chapter 15. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation of John chapter 15 to begin with verse 18. Thank you, Father, for your word, and we ask you to illuminate it in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. When the world hates you, remember it hated me before it hated you. You mean the world's going to hate us? Yep. Not just dislike, but hate us. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that your light's bright? Maybe with some co-workers or some of your family or some of your friends or some of your neighbors. And sometimes people stay away from you in crowds, right? <laughs> it says the world would love you if you belong to it, but you don't. Now, see, if you belong to the world and you did the things that they were in the world and hobnobbed around town with them, rubbing elbows and doing some of the same things. They would love you, but you don't belong to them. And he says, I chose you to come out of the world, and so it hates you. Do you remember what I told you? A servant is not greater than the master. In other words, they hated Jesus, 
So they're going to hate us too because we're part of Him. We're one flesh with Him. So there's no excuse for their sin. Anyone who hates me hates my Father too. Well, why is that? Well, because if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus, I and my Father are one, right? So hating the, Jesus means hating the Father too. If I hadn't done such miraculous signs among them that no one else could do, they would not be counted guilty. But as it is, they saw all that I did and yet hated both of us, me and my father. This has fulfilled what the scripture said. They hated me without a cause. Boy, that made me think too of uh, the apostle, or uh, P, uh, Saul. You know, Saul thought he was doing the church a favor, didn't he, when he was persecuting Christians. He thought he was doing the right thing. And because he was religious, but from his perspective, he thought he was doing God a justice. They hated me without a cause. But, but, now this is the good part, all right? But, I will send you the counselor. I will send the Holy Ghost. I will send the comforter, the paraclete, the one that's called alongside to help. So in the face of this hatred and face of the rejection and everything, he says there's an answer. And it's the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of truth. He will come to you from the Father and will tell you about me. And you must also tell others about me because you have been with me from the beginning. Go to chapter 16 for a minute. Just a few verses here. I have told you these things so that you won't fall away. Now, why would that be? Because people don't like us. If people reject us, if people hate us, there's going to be a tendency to say, well, forget this Christianity business. I'm going to go with the with uh, the world so that I can be liked because everybody wants to be liked. Amen. So you have to make a decision, don't you? Am I going to be a God follower? If I am, then guess what? It's a foregone conclusion that you're going to be rejected, you're going to be hated, and are you going to be tough enough, gutsy enough, have enough, as the Jewish people say, enough chutzpah to stand your ground, not compromise, not give up, and continue to share Jesus with people. For you will be expelled from the synagogues, and the time is coming when those who will kill you think they are doing God a service. Well, that was the Apostle Saul, right? Who became Paul, rather. He thought he was doing God a service by killing Christians or putting them in prison. This is because they have never known the Father or me. Yes, I'm telling you these things now so that when they happen, you will remember, I warned you, I told you it was going to happen, Okay? I didn't tell you earlier because I was going to be with you for a while longer. So I think we all have faced this, haven't we? I know I, as, a, as a pastor, I've faced opposition from the enemy and, you know, people that, how many of you know the devil wants to undermine your confidence? He wants to undermine your boldness, your courage, 
and uh, get you to keep your big mouth shut, right, about Jesus. <laughs> How many have ever felt disliked or hated by the world, all right? Maybe, maybe some co-workers or some friends or whomever. Well, we've all had this opposition. But that, remember, that's what the enemy is after, is after your boldness, your confidence, and your witness. You know, there's a gal running for a school board. If, do we have a picture of that back there? There's a form. Did you get that, Matt? Yeah, I think there's a form. There's a gal running. What is it? Okay, yeah, it's, uh, here it is right here. Thank you. And uh, this gal touched base with me. She's running for school board in, in Blackhawk where I live. And uh, so she filled out this form from uh, Mike Gears, Pennsylvania Family. And you can find out exactly what they believe. So anyhow, you can see with this lady here, S stands for support and O stands for oppose. Number one, providing state tax credits and education savings accounts to enable parents to choose what school their child attends. Yeah, they, she supports that. Uh, reserving girls' sports exclusively for biological females. She supports that. She supports separating restrooms, locker rooms, and other privacy areas based on biological sex. She uh, permitting students to discuss their Christian faith with others during non-Christian, non-class time on school premises. Supports it. Allowing school personnel to refer students to abortion providers. She opposes that. I think she's pretty, good, pretty right on, don't you? <laughs> Requiring signed permission uh, opt in for a parent before a student may participate in sex education classes or presentations on gender identity theory. She supports that. By the way, she sent, a le sent me a letter also that stating that in this particular instance, she was instrumental in getting some sexually explicit books and pornographic books actually off the shelves in the libraries and the schools. <laughs> so this is the kind of person I want to vote for, right? Amen. How about you? Amen. And I could go on and on. Here, um, let's look at the last one. Specifying in school policy that materials containing visual depictions of people engaging in sex acts or explicit written descriptions of people engaging in sex acts is not age appropriate for the school's curriculum and library. She supports that. So anyhow, that, that policy, she, that she doesn't want that to happen. So anyhow... Uh, you can get online and find out what your particular school board in your town, what they believe in, and what they're you know, so that you'll know how to vote. But these are the kind. Of, and then, by the way, she has shared with me that she has undergone some persecution, and people have written some nasty letters about her. <coughs> there has been some opposition to her moral stand. And but, but the comforter. Everybody say, but the comforter, <laughs> the helper. He helps you when the world stacks up against you. Yeah. He is the spirit of truth. And he'll enable you to speak the truth in love with confidence. And he'll make you bold. In the book of Jude, it says, Building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, comma, keeping yourselves in the love of God. Man, if we can just stay in the love of God, how do we do that? Pray in the Holy Ghost. It'll inspire your faith. And it will help you to keep in the love walk and not deviate from that love walk. In other words, it will enable you to smile and walk right up to that critical person confidently and boldly and speak positively, super lovingly, with no malice in your heart. And you can put that rejection and that hurt behind you because you know the end from the beginning like God does. You know the end game which is the salvation of souls and, in pl and planting seeds in people's lives, right? And you also know that 2 Corinthians 2.14 says that thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. He always causes us to triumph. God doesn't want you to fail. 
1 Corinthians 15, 57, he says, Thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So you and I can rise to the occasion when we'll go to the Holy Ghost, stir up the gift that's on the inside, and be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, Ephesians 6, 10. Ignoring our feelings and the hatred and the rejection that might come our way. You say, yeah, Pastor, but if you're smiling and you're talking to them nice and, and you're, you know, you're being courageous and bold, aren't you being phony? No, you're not. Because if you re- read book uh, James 3, 3, 7, I believe it is. In fact, let's take a look at that. James 3, 7, or 17. James 3, 17. Notice what it says. That the wisdom that comes from above... James 3.17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without hypocrisy. I'm sorry, without partiality, without hypocrisy. So when you're standing on the Word of God, when you're walking by faith and not by sight, when you're walking in love, when you're being rejected and, and hated, guess what? You are not being a hypocrite. You're acting on the Word of God, aren't you? It is without hypocrisy, right? Right. And you're doing so so that you can sow that seed, which is the Word of God. Luke 8, 11 tells us that. that The the seed is the Word of God. And you're expecting that root, that uh, seed to take root and to germinate and to produce a harvest, right? And this is how we combat hatred and rejection. You know, when we're soul winning on the streets... We need to simply walk, talk, speak as though we're loved. Isn't that right? Act like you want to be treated, and pretty soon you'll be treated like you're acting. Right? Amen. If you refuse, if somebody refuses their track, and once in a while people will refuse a track that I give them, give them. But I just say to them, oh, hey, no problem. Have a blessed day. See you later. You know. I don't get all bent out of shape over that. But those who reject and hate you, though... At the time, someday, when they get to heaven, if they get to heaven, they're going to thank you for your persistence and your love and your seed sowing and planting the gospel in their hearts. Isn't that right? Yeah. That you took the time out of your schedule, even though they were nasty, to, to put the word in their hearts, right? I know when I was teaching public schools, uh, there was a fellow that, was, that taught with me. And uh, I'd come to the Lord, and man, I was on fire, and I was sharing Jesus. And so we're, we're jogging at lunchtime together. And so he's telling me about all these different girls, three different girls he was with over the weekend, you know. And, and I'm telling them about Jesus. And, and uh, so <laughs> later, he, he got born again, and he became a pastor. But he told me, he says, man, I remember when we were jogging together, I wanted to tell you, hey, why don't you jog this way? I'm going to jog this way. He said, but I didn't. He says, you were a nice guy, so I didn't say anything. <laughs> but you see, people will do that, won't they? In the face of their nastiness, you want them into the kingdom, right? And you're an overcomer, and so just go ahead and act like one. Act like Paul and Peter and, and John and Jude and James and Timothy and Barnabas and... Saul and all those guys. Why? Because you're the light of the world. And don't keep that light under a bushel basket. Speak, walk, live like a winner because you are a winner. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Remember this, that the key to all of this business when you're feeling hated, rejected, is the comforter, the Holy Spirit. He is the answer to the opposition. Glory to God. Do you believe that today? And we got to stir up the gift and and realize that he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He says, lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the earth. He will give you the words, and sometimes he'll even make you cool. Can you imagine that? 78 years old, and I'm trying to be cool. (laughs) But he'll do that, and he might even give you some words that are going to be a little humorous and to break the ice, right? And I give somebody a track and tell them, well, 23 is going to be your best year ever. And they'll say, sometimes they'll say, well, you know what? 23 is almost over. I says, but 24 ain't going to be too shabby either. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) But anyhow, 
God will give you the words to speak. See, you, you don't have to come across like a stiff shirt legalist, Amen. a religious prude, you know. And you can still walk in holiness and not compromise the word of God, Amen. right? Amen. And he will help you to relate in some way, find something to relate about, maybe football or, or flying or sports or classic cars, oh, yeah. <laughs> car cruises, whatever, right? Some place that you can relate with that person. Because the Apostle Paul says, how do, what did he say? I am all things to all people that I might by all means win some. He tried to relate to that garbage collector or tried to relate to that attorney or tried to relate to that engineer or that architect or, or that person digging a ditch. Amen. Whoever they were, he was going to relate to them for one purpose. So he could get them into the kingdom of God. And that's the way we need to be. Flexible, right? Amen. And uh, so, but our boldness comes from the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 tells us, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. What's that power for? So that you can be a witness throughout all the earth, Right? Hallelujah. And you know, b before I was filled with the Holy Ghost, I did not win one person to Jesus. Not a one. I was saved, but I didn't win a person to Jesus. After I got filled with the Holy Ghost, I started win uh, winning a lot of people to Jesus. And so, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is for service, primarily. Amen. Isn't it? So that you can win people to Jesus. In fact, I've got some, I've, I've passed these out before, but I'll pass them out, and you can read them over later. Ushers, could you help me? He says, this is called benefits of praying in the Holy Ghost. And so you can look these over and study them. Check out the scriptures. Just do a little Bible study for yourself. All right, you got some there? Give James some. Thank you. I'm not going to go over them right now. Got other things to say today. But not only is the baptism of the Holy Spirit for service, but it's also to benefit you. There are so many wonderful benefits, personal benefits for you in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Somebody said one time, the world needs Jesus, but the church needs the Holy Ghost. That's exactly right. Why do we need the Holy Ghost? So that we can become strong disciples, so that we can be witnesses unto him in Jerusalem and throughout the world, all right? And what did Jesus say in Luke 24, 49? He says, I want you to go and I want you to wait in Jerusalem till you're endued with power from on high, until you're clothed upon with power from on high. In other words, guys, don't go off ill-equipped. Don't go off trying to witness to somebody or talk to somebody about Jesus until you have this infilling of the Holy Spirit. You need this power in order to accomplish what I want to do. And so when they did that, they come out of the upper room on the day of Pentecost, and those guys, my goodness, 120 of them started to share Jesus, and 3,000 people got born again. Hallelujah. Not only that, but then the man at the gate beautiful got healed, and 5,000 more got saved. I'm telling you, that's 8,000 people in just a couple of days' time got born again. Where did it start? In the upper room when they got filled with the Holy Ghost. Woo! Glory to God. Woo! I'll tell you, I'm ready to jump. So the Holy Ghost is the key. And if you want to get the same results that Jesus or that the apostles got, do the same thing that Jesus told them to do. Get filled. Go. Terry. You don't have to tarry, but just receive it. Amen. Now they had to tarry, but we don't. We can just receive it right now. And said, so be filled with the Spirit so that you can be strong and be a be, and won't be uh, ill-equipped or so that you can be fully armed, fully empowered, and endued. With this Holy Ghost power from on high. So, Ephesians 5.18 says, be filled with the Spirit. That's a command. Be filled with the Spirit. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to, I, I don't think I want to do that, Pastor. But listen, he's telling us, each one of us needs to do that. Be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart unto the Lord. You're missing out on something wonderful. Because... The Bible says in Acts 19.20 that the church grew mightily and prevailed whenever they received all that God had for them. 
Do you know that uh, this, now this is a statistic, it's a little bit old, maybe, maybe eight or ten years old, but there was a time whenever this statistic stated that the Pentecostals were winning more people to Jesus than any other religious persuasion, fundamentalist, whomever. I won't name names of denominations, but they were winning more people than anybody else to Jesus. And they named it the Assembly of God Church. So why is that? Because they were empowered. Now, I don't know if that's still true or not, but that's what we're talking about worldwide evangelism. But you might say, yeah, but I don't want to speak in tongues. Well, you don't have to speak in tongues to go to heaven. All right, let's establish that right now. You can still go to heaven, but I'm telling you, you can live a much more productive, fulfilled, gratified life when you take all that God's got, not only the first work of grace, but the second work of grace too. Do you believe that today? And be filled and be clothed upon. You know, my wife went down to Aliquippa here a couple of weeks ago and bought a pair of shoes, specialty shoes. And I went with her, and, and so uh, these shoes... Guess what? Both shoes had a tongue inside the shoe. The tongue goes with the shoe. So when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, tongues go with the experience. Amen. Hallelujah. Why is that? Well, the Bible says the tongue is full of, it's an unruly member, and it's set on fire of hell, and it's full of deadly poison. And the Bible also says, no man can tame the tongue. But guess what? The Holy Ghost can tame our tongue. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So let him do that. I had a mouth on me. But God had to do a work. <laughs> and I, when I surrendered to the Holy Ghost, that happened. Plus, you know, go with me to Romans chapter 8. We're almost through here. Romans 8. 26, Romans 8, 26. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. This is the report of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. Hallelujah. I love the person of the Holy Spirit, don't you? Amen. Because the person of the Holy Spirit represents the power of God, and he carries out the miraculous will of God in a supernatural fashion. He produces supernatural events and miracles and healings and with transforming power. And so, He causes the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk. So when we yield to the Holy Ghost, He will transform you from the inside out. He'll turn you into God's workmanship. So much so that you won't recognize yourself. You'll have to reintroduce yourself to yourself. <laughs> okay? You'll be totally transformed. Hallelujah. You'll become this bold, courageous person, free from bondages, free from inhibitions, but exuding this extravagant love to the world. And you know what else? You'll become free in your worship. You won't be tight, because tight ain't right. Okay. You'll be free in your worship. He you said, why are these people, some people free? And I, so, well, you just got to get filled and stay full. And you'll become free in your worship. You know, right now there's worldwide demonstrations, aren't there? Anti-Semitic demonstrations, anti-American, pro-Palestinian yeah. demonstrations. Do you know what it is? It's all an attack on Western culture. It's from the Marxists, the socialists, the anarchists. Exactly. Huh? That's exactly right. It's an attack on the foundation of Christianity. And in the midst of all this turmoil and hatred and violence and wars, we can find solace by praying in the Holy Ghost. That's the key to rising above all of it and maintaining our inner peace. Can you shout amen, somebody? Amen. Praying in the Holy Ghost is a wonderful tool to stay sane, strong, bold in the face of the opposition, and not succumb to all the negativism that's around you. How many have experienced that lately? Man, you watch TV and CNN or hopefully you don't have, watch Fox, <laughs> whatever. But anyhow, I'm not telling you who you watch for. But anyhow, when you watch that and then you start to get down, well, you know what? When you feel down, shut that thing off and go pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Stir up the gift. Amen. Amen. And he'll, he'll in, encourage you and refresh you and 
The Bible says in Isaiah 28, 11, that there is a rest and a refreshing when we pray in the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So don't succumb to all of that. We're not alone. He empowers us. He equips us to handle whatever comes against us. Now, those guys we showed you, those baseball players, do you think they don't get criticized? Sure. For their stand called Jesus Freaks. Maybe white right wing radicals, huh? Sure, for their stand for the Lord. It's to be expected. However, their sacrifice will plant seeds in young people's hearts and lives that will not return void, Isaiah 55, 11. Amen. And so you've got the paraclete to help you. And you know, even the football players. I showed you that picture of Tua from uh, Miami, the quarterback from Miami. He's a spirit-filled quarterback, praising the Holy Ghost. Deion Sanders, the same thing. Bryce Young, the quarterback, what he used to play for Alabama. I think it was Alabama or Clemson, I forget. But anyhow, he's now in the pros. Also, spirit-filled quarterback. So they have a way of releasing the tension, the pressure. And they can go to God and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. But listen, as long as I can tap that power source in the Holy Ghost... I can sense the paraclete coming alongside to help me. Do you believe that today? I get a surge of supernatural energy to charge my spiritual battle, and you can too. Glory to God. It's time to lean on the Holy Ghost to walk victoriously in then perilous times. Glory to God. Paul faced it. He faced the fiercest opposition, didn't he? But he rested in the glory of God. There is coming a tsunami, as I said, of Holy Ghost power to carry the miraculous will of God to super, with supernatural events. And He is going to override the natural laws of time, space, and matter to change some things. Do you believe it? Let's stand this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Father. Talking about a little bit of strife here is... O- over dinner, my wife said to me, I met this horrible and rude man downtown this morning, and right away I knew he was a troublemaker. He started to insult me. He used really bad language. He even threatened me. Well, how did you meet this fellow? I asked, very concerned. She said, well, we met by accident. I ran into him at 3rd and Main with my car. <laughs> But no matter what you run against, the opposition, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is the answer. Everybody say, but the Holy Ghost. Ghost. He is the answer. Hallelujah. Those of you watching and everybody here, just say this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father. Father. Say this with me right out loud. Heavenly Father. Father. I believe with all my heart. heart. Jesus is the Son of God. God. He died for my sins. I I ask Him right now to be Lord of my life. Thank you for forgiving me of all my past sins. Thank you for loving me, for caring for me, and for a first-class plan for my life. In Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that prayer, meant it in your heart, just like these baseball players have a sincere relationship, that's what it's all about. A communicating, up-close relationship with Jesus. Talking to Him every day. Reading your Bible. Hallelujah. Bill, you got something there? So if you've received Him as personal Lord and Savior, get in a good church, a Bible-preaching church. Talk to Jesus every single day. It's not really my words, but we already have it written down for us here. And if you look up the book of Micah, but chapter 4 begins in the last days. Yeah. Everybody agrees this is the last days. Yeah, that's right. But in the other next page, says, but you, Bethlehem, you are small in Judah, but the, you will, out of you will come a ruler. Yes. I'm skipping some of this for timeline. In other words, Jesus, out of Bethlehem, he, he, was, he pre-existed Micah 5, 2, didn't he? But going up to 5, 3, therefore, Israel will be a, abandoned. It certainly was for centuries. Yes. Until the time when she is who is in labor gives birth. And, and we say that that 
was the birth of Israel, which happened in 1948. Yeah. And to that in Revelation, we also read, a great and wondrous sign has appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon, skipping sun. She was pregnant and Garrett cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. And so that corresponds with Micah 3. It does, yes. And then it continues, which was talking about harpazo. She gave That's a Greek word for rapture, right? Her 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 which, which goes past the time that we're talking about, which is right now. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations and with an iron scepter. And her child was snapped up. That we are part Snatched of that child. Snatched up, yeah. yeah. We are part of that child. Praise God. And, and, and I didn't look it back up, but in Psalms 90.10, we have the age of a man. The man child was born at a date of 1948. And so if we take two score and 10, we come right out. What year is this? This this generation could be it. This generation, then it continues. I want to take up a whole lot of time, but this generation that sees, we see the word. It's given right here, and I believe that I'm going to see it myself. Amen. I pray that you will too. Amen. Not die, but be raptured. Glory to God. All right, Bill. Thanks, bro. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Glory to God. Let's praise Him as we go. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. Amen. Love you. power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Let us declare it to break every, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain.
Thank you, Lord. Help us to walk in that freedom this morning. We're redeemed from the curse of the law. For death, you brought us life. For poverty, you brought us wealth and health, Lord. For sickness, you brought us health. Oh, we enforce the devil's defeat this morning. Hey. Walk in that freedom, amen.